Hi, and welcome back to Studio Tamara the Mystical. Before we get started, I'm just using my normal palette here. It's a mess. Um, so however you want to set your palette up, I set mine up at the same time every time. And before we get started, if you like my videos, hit like and subscribe, please. It's free. Palette knives are used in oil painting and um, some people work exclusively with palette knives like my friend John Nagridge. The shout outs for you today, John. I'm sure you could do this video a lot better justice than I can, um, but I just use palette knives for uh, some things in my paintings. I mostly use brushes, but as you can see, there are many, many different shapes. I'm gonna show you a couple simple tricks using a palette knife and some things that you can use um, when you're out in the field. Now, obviously, carrying this out in the field is a little bulky and you wouldn't want to bring this much. So what I would recommend is getting a standard palette knife, looks about like this, and a small one. And you may find in the future too that you like um, a certain size better. I prefer this size. Also, you need to keep your sides sharp. You need to keep the blades on these sharp. As you can see, I have dried paint on this, so that's a no-no. My friend Heiner would really let me have that. That'd be good. Okay, so we're gonna do some practices. So if you have a knife, super. Um, just grab a scrap board, and if you do not have a knife, hit pause. Drive to Walmart or Meyer or Michaels or wherever, Hobby Lobby. Grab a palette knife, borrow one from a friend, and then come on back, okay? So in this painting here, you could see I used the palette knife to do some of these little bitty branches in here. Um, I also used the thick palette knife to do a lot of this snow to get those effects. So there was palette knife used in this painting for effects that I could not have gotten any other way, like the snow Clumps. This is just one swipe, just like birthday cake or putting cream cheese on a bagel. Um, here, you know, some real slick palette knife work. Here's some more here. So I'm gonna show you on this little practice board some ways that you can learn how to do this for yourself. Rock on! Okay, my first recommendation would be for you to get a palette knife you feel is comfortable in your hand. It's gonna vary depending on what you like the best and that's how it should be. And then um, take a little like blue color, any blue you like or if you like purple and kind of just mix a nice little neutral purpley bluey gray kind of color and put a little turp on there. Sorry, oops, wrong side. This is a masonite board, by the okay, way. Okay, so what you need to do is get a little masonite board or a little palette, mix some blue, purple, make your own little violet gray, take the palette knife, and just smear a little bit on there. Sometimes I use a little extra turp for this, right? Just smear it on there. This is just an undercolor, okay? The painting that we're doing right now is just practice. We're indoors, it's a freezing winter day here in Michigan, so we're gonna do a little practice painting. So we mixed some purpley color and blue, little cobalt blue, little, I always say this wrong, dioxazine purple, I don't know. Anyway, purple. I'm using M. Graham Walnut oil-based paints, a little bit of uh, Gamsol, and just put some purples in there, okay? All right, so I'm gonna be giving you guys kind of an example of a winter scene. I didn't really want it to be that dark, but it is what it is, so, okay. Now, you know what? Here's another excellent opportunity to learn. If you do something you don't like, with oil paint, the joy is dip a rag in turp, wipe it off, 
and it's gone just like that so yay we just learned something new be fearless okay so I'm gonna get a little more purple a little bit less red I had no interest in that red getting in there but if you've seen my palette it's quite the mess right now so that's all right a little broken color never hurt anything did it okay so you get a little purple on your board right now how do we make this look like let's say we want to put some snow in here oh i got a goober on there look at that Ooh, it's a little fuzz from the towels that i use as scraps if, if, if you've got any way to get scrap towels they make excellent painting rags excellent excellent just chop them up okay so here's a basic little pretty little happy scene right we're gonna take some straight white and watch this we're just gonna I'm just gonna put some right here all of a sudden there's a bank of snow there see how I did that so I'm gonna take some white I'm gonna put it here Got a little line of blue in there, sorry about that. That's even almost more convincing. So, white. I'm gonna show you up close how we do this. Okay, so we've got our little palette knife. Here is my palette of paint. And I'm going to take some white. Now, now what you wanna do is you want to get the white nice and smooth. Uh oh, I got purple in there. You're gonna have to wipe that off. So get some white, nice and smooth, right? And then load one side thicker, just like that. Then you come up to your painting. And let's see, where do we want snow? We want snow here. Just put it on there. Want snow here? Put it on there. Snow here? Sure, why not? Because we're having fun. That's why painting is supposed to be fun. If you're having stress or you're worried, take a deep breath. And hakuna Matata. All right, so here's a thick, thick chunk in the front because whatever's closer is gonna be thicker. Right? And I guess I'm just gonna make up a little winter scene. You can make one up with me if you'd like. And we're gonna use the palette knife and we're gonna use a little bit of the brush. Okay, so for the sky, we're gonna take a little white. A little bit of white with turp just to get that wet back there I keep calling it turp I use gamsol turp is actually not very good uh, I'm gonna do a little negative painting meaning I'm gonna make up some sky holes take some white and put some sky holes in here this is a fun little fantasy painting. So if it's a really yucky day and you don't want to go out, you can do these. You can make makeup paintings. That's fun. Why not? Okay. So you may not see it yet, but I'm already kind of seeing a little forest scene with a bunch of snow there. What I've got here is just a, uh, this is called Fine Touch. It's a filbert probably way too big but it just happened to be right here and I said hey let's use it all right I'm gonna mix a very tiny amount of this is cerulean blue I'm gonna use a little bit of cad yellow light with the cerulean blue if that's too much wipe it off pick up more white I'm trying to get I'm using dry paint which is stupid but I'm trying to get a turquoisey kind of a color. And I think I about got it. Kind of the color I was looking for right there. Okay. And what I want to do with that is just kind of put a little, I want a little more 
gray, a little more white. There we go. I'll put a little. white I'm just trying to figure out I'm trying to figure out what exactly it is I'm trying to do here really but um, yeah I don't really like that color do you I don't like it so we're gonna get rid of it that's gone We're gonna make the sky have a little, you know, especially spring skies. I don't know if you noticed, but they have viridian green in them. So, that, so that's kind of crazy what I just did, but whatever. Um, all right, so we have this crazy yellowish kind of sky. I'll turn the light up, maybe you could see a little better. And I'm gonna add a little pink in here. reason I'm doing that is uh, I want to see what we can do here with this palette knife once I get done with all this stuff I'm kind of loading in. All right, so there's going to be a little bit of a water coming in or something. We don't really know. Okay, so I I think that's probably good enough. Uh, take a little Viridian, take a little Cobalt, very little. Take a little bit of this gray mix. And a little purple. Put the purple over there so it doesn't overpower it. Okay, and then I'm gonna kind of put some trees in here too by adding a base. Okay. All right, so I'm basically at the point where this fun little, very much so abstract little painting uh, will need a little knife work, okay? This is just all completely to show you guys for demo purposes only. Um, but you gotta have something that you can resonate with when you're watching it, so. Okay. So I'm gonna get the little palette knife. And we're gonna go in with a little purple and a little you know, purple and yellow will make gray. So if you take purple and you take some uh, ochre or some yellow and some white, it'll make a gray. And that's what I want, a purpley gray, like a dirty purpley gray kind of color. And what we're gonna do is we are just going to go in, scrubby scrub, pick some up, and put a few little dark areas in here. Right? So, I'm using the bottom of it. If there's stuff on the top, flip it, turn it, practice. Right? You're having fun now, aren't you? If you're not, you should be. Turn on a little music, sing, have fun. Art is supposed to be fun. Okay. So now I'm just going to take some turp and really water down that gray mix and just load one edge and watch what happens. You get these little lines, right? Look like trees kind of growing in there, don't they? Or something, we don't know. And that's okay, we don't need to know. Um, we wanna go back over that snow, keep it in there. And it's gonna be thicker, and then as it goes back, it'll be more narrow. That's what creates distance. So load one side of your knife with white. This side is loaded, if you can't tell. And watch this, we're gonna put a line way in the distance. Just one little line. 
See how that just pushed everything way back there? I know this is messy and crazy and it's not perfect and fun. Sometimes you gotta be a little crazy and messy. Okay, so now after you see all these sticks and you think, oh, that's too much, it's too much. What you do is you just take a brush, dry brush with no paint and just dab over the sticks in certain places especially at the bottom they've got to come up whoops sorry they've got to come up from somewhere so you're just gonna dab at the sticks just dab 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 see now we're starting to create what looks almost like maybe a nice little happy winter scene. We're gonna wipe some of these out because they're not really there. So I'm using the palette knife and the brush together in combination to kind of create this illusion. Okay, so I'm gonna show you two more real quick things just for fun. One would be if we're gonna make the sky have a sun right here, a bright, bright sun, we're gonna need a little kind of darker colors in the sky. So I am put a little blue-gray on and I'm kind of putting a little darker colors in the sky. See how I did that? Dip the palette knife in turpentine. It makes this move like butter, all right? The reason I made this darker because I'm gonna put a real bright sun right there, okay? Um, and, you know, anything while you're going through here, if it bothers you, go ahead and kind of touch it up, fix it up, clean it up, whatever. I mean, this is your little for fun make-believe painting, right? Okay, so we got the dark area and a little pink in the sky just for fun. Isn't this fun? Yay! Now, one of the best highlight colors that you can mix is Cad Yellow Light and White. So, Cad Yellow Light, or, or some uh, paint companies call it Lemon Yellow. And I gotta find somewhere dry on my board. If, you, if, if your palette is a disastrous mess like mine, you may wanna just have like scratch boards around. I have one right here, like a scrap board that you can mix on. So I'm just gonna put a little cad yellow light and white right here. And it's gonna make the brightest color. Now, if it's too yellow, you need to add more white. I'm gonna turn the light on. Maybe that'll help. There we go. See how this is much lighter than this? Color mixing is fun. You can tell I do it a lot. Um, sometimes it's fun when you don't have the pressure of doing a painting. You just get to mix colors and play with paint. So, so I'm making it even lighter, adding more white. See how the color, the chroma, I think they call it. Oh, and there's a, there's a nice hair for you. Well, that's that's not fun. I gotta get rid of that. <laughs> um, see how it's yellower, and then as we add white, it gets lighter, 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 lighter. It also gets, when you add a lot of white, colors get colder. So, um, all right, we are gonna now take this really white, white, white color, and I'm almost smacking the palette knife on there, and then go nice and smooth and get a nice loaded palette knife. And what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna grab the painting and just put it there. See what I just did there? That's it. Now look at my palette knife, it's all dirty. It's got blue on it and yellow, it's gotta be wiped off. So you wipe it off, get it clean. Now take a straight white, okay? And put the straight white right on top of that yellow. And now we're starting to get Oh, there we go. Now we're starting to get what I wanted, like that dreamy kind of the sun is up there and we know it. 
There it is. It's kind of showing through, right? And you might even want to use a little bit of that then down here. Take and load one little, just a little bit of yellow in here. Why not try it? So we got that. If you want an actual round little sun, you can do that too. Just make a round little sun. And if you want that to stick out more, you're gonna add a little more of this darker, bluey kind of sky color with, water it down with the turp, and you put dark next to it, look what happens. It jumps out at you. So if you want something lighter, put dark next to it. If you want it darker, likewise, put light next to it. Okay. So there's that. Now, if you want the sun to speckle through a little, you can even add, dip your palette knife just a little bit here and there. Or you can go back to your yellow and white mix. There it is, you got that kind of fun, cloudy, I don't know what, Arctic. And I'm gonna use the palette knife too to scratch extra clumps of paint off, unless you really like to see clumps of paint. I sometimes feel like when it's real far away, it shouldn't be clumpy. It can be clumpy up in the front, but if it's really far away, it needs to almost fade to nothing, you know? Because it's way out there. And the more little nooks and crannies you add, and the more broken color you have, the more it's gonna look like real nature. Because nature isn't one lollipop tree sticking up. You know, it's kind of a, oh, this light now is being our enemy. We gotta turn it off. Okay. You know, so you're starting to see this nice little scene come together. And now I'm gonna show you another way to use your palette knife. Besides the highlight ridge along the back, the smear for the sun, the giant buttered strokes for the snow close up, the scattered feathered strokes for the far trees. I'm starting to feel like Bob Ross, oh boy. Okay. Um, let's say you wanted to put a couple grasses right here in the foreground. And I'm using this littler knife because this is a little board because I'm just doing a demo. If I was using a normal plein air um, size panel, 8, 10, or 11, 14, I'd probably be using this size palette knife. God, look at this thing, it's terrible. I can't even tell what number it is. This is just your standard like inch and a half. And this one's a little one, maybe one inch. So, okay. Let's do some grasses. So um, with grasses, if you can look at my palette here, um, I think probably ochre and Naples and white go the best together. Now your palette may be very nice and organized and that's excellent and it should be if that's how you learn to paint. This is how I paint. I see all these colors like this. If everything was one separate little drop, I'd be almost afraid to even touch it. So, so I'm mixing some white, some Naples, which is this real light color, and some ochre. And I'm kind of having fun here too, guys. So you mix it and you leave it broken. So I don't mix it till it's all one exact color. It's kind of got a little bit of combination in there. And then I'm gonna wipe my knife off and I'm going to just load one side only. See how I did that? The paint is only right there. And then I'm going to load some paint. Tap, 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 tap. Okay, now you need a little darker for contrast. Take some ochre, some sienna and mix it. A little more burnt sienna, mix it. You want a little darker for contrast? Put a couple in. Remember, don't make them all the same direction and all the same height or it won't look real. Nature is very random. Okay, so that's how you do that. You need to practice, practice, practice. I've been paint, plein air painting 15 years now, just plein air out in the field, painting outside. Um, 
and you just need to practice, practice. If by chance you do not like how that looks also, you can always, let me grab my brush. If you think this is too much, because it kind of is, you can always take your brush and really lightly pick some of it up. See how I did that? This is the beauty of the oil paint. Take some of that off, okay? Just really lightly. And you can use your fingers. You can wipe it off. You can dab it, see how that looks. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't. Maybe you don't like that at all. And maybe you say, this is terrible, fix it. I gotta fix right here first, I screwed that all up. So, oh, I need purple. So put a little purple in, go back through. See, and you can just fix it. You can just play with this stuff endlessly. Take a little more of your light uh, Naples color, put that in there, because we got some. There, now, this is starting to look like you can, here's something else you can do with your palette knife. You could sign your name. You can scratch if you want to pull the board color from below. You can also make scratches far off to look like trees. You can do all kinds of stuff. You can even use this to scratch into some of these if you think they're too thick. So there's so many things you can do with palette knives. And I know this was just a very basic short video, but get, get, a, get a palette full of oil paint. Get a palette knife. And you can even do this on cardboard. You can practice on masonite. You can use canvas. You can do anything. So here is our final little practice mini painting. We had fun, even if it turns out horrible, it's fun. So have a great day. Do a little painting. Keep smiling and share your paintings in the comments below. I would love to see them. Thank you so much, everybody.